Gautam Trivedi, Managing Director and Head of Equities uh, with Relicare Capital Markets, joins us live. Uh, Gautam, morning. Thank you for joining us. I just read a strategy report dated 25th of April, morning. slightly dated though. And uh, the fine print of the report is following, which is that you're advising your clients to buy defensives, to buy pharma, to stay invested uh, in, uh, in consumption names, and they should avoid domestic cyclicals such as financials and industrials. What's the thinking behind this call? Yeah, I think uh, at this point, the bigger concern that uh, foreigners are having right now is on the fiscal situation. Again, I'm not saying anything that's dramatically new, but the uh, concern since the budget has actually amplified even more. A lot of foreign uh, institution investors that were uh, reasonably active since uh, uh, or before the budget actually have uh, significantly cut down their positions and are actually sitting and waiting uh, for clarity on GAR, clarity on uh, fiscal discipline uh, going forward. So I think we are recommending people to take on a defensive portfolio. Even uh, for that matter, consumer stocks, even though they're not cheap, uh, uh, you are looking at these stocks anywhere from uh, 20 to 25 times uh, forward earnings. But still, uh, there is uh, appetite even now to buy these stocks. Gautam, hi, morning. The final notification on GAR is going to come out on May 7, just a few days away. Uh, what stand A do you think the government is going to take and what is it that the markets are expecting by way of a texture on this note? I think what is, uh, if, I, if I step back for a minute and look at the volumes and in general the uh, net FI numbers since uh, the announcement of GAR, which was on the 16th uh, of March, uh, which, is, uh, which, which was the day of the budget. If you look at the absolute amount, and uh, I tracked this just recently, $8.8 .8 billion were invested between the 1st of January this year to the 15th of March. From the 16th of March till yesterday, a net $141 million have been invested in the market. So it clearly tells you that the overall appetite uh, uh, for India for the time being has, has clearly uh, uh, shrunk. Uh, number one. Number two, I think uh, what is also relevant is that the government has announced that GAR will be implemented but has, has, has been quiet on what the guidelines are. So I think that confusion, and that's been uh, over six weeks of that uh, confusion, I think has led to multiple theories and uh, obviously foreigners don't like that, domestic investors don't like that, and hence uh, that's, that's cooled off the market. So I think what people are looking forward to is a final clarity on whether it's going to be retrospective or not, and more importantly, what exactly is going to be the uh, tax rate. There's still enough confusion, a lot of legal debate going on, but nobody knows what the real numbers are. So Gautam, let me construct uh, two scenarios. Later this month, we get clarity on GAR. And if GAR is indeed implemented with ret retrospect, what will happen to markets? And if GAR is implemented but no retrospective clause is there, what will happen to markets? I think if GAR is implemented with retrospective effect, uh, will definitely be a big negative uh, for the market. If it's not, I think that will be uh, uh, taken as a positive. But more importantly, it won't be as big a positive as, as the fact that there's final finality to this whole debate which has been ensuing for the last six weeks. So I think that is really what the bigger concern is. And I don't think we, uh, for that matter, or for the, for, for the matter, most foreigners are averse to paying taxes. All they're looking for is the final guidelines and what exactly they are. Do you expect markets to either uh, appreciate sharply or correct sharply the minute uh, the final GAR guidelines are tabled? I, I think if, if, if they're all positive, there will definitely be a relief rally. And I think uh, I will personally be getting on the phone with a lot of FIs to, to encourage them to come back and invest in India. So after this interview, what's the first thing you will do when you will pick up your phone? Which are the stocks you're telling your clients to buy and which are the stocks you're telling your clients to sell? We are still, uh, like I said, uh, and as the, as the report said, remaining defensive. That is not significantly going to change uh, between now and Monday. Uh, but we still like uh, the auto space, we like mid-cap IT, uh, the evaluation gap between the large caps and the mid-caps is still very, very wide and uh, we like names like uh, Polaris, uh, Mindtree. Uh, we also actually like Infosys uh, among the large caps given the fact that it's now trading at uh, 14 times forward earnings and a uh, tad lower than HCL Tech which has never happened in the history of uh, Infosys' trading history. So. These are, the, these are the stocks and sectors that we like. Gautam, there is a reason why defensives or consumption stocks in the near term are outperforming. There is global uncertainty. Consumer stocks have a strong business model. They have a virtual zero debt on their balance sheet and they have a predicted, predictable return on equity. 
but at these levels are consumer stocks pricing in a near perfect scenario i think uh, for the most part yes they are but unfortunately i think investors in particular are not uh, looking at uh, being adventurous and are uh, uh, as you said uh, sticking to uh, safer bets i think unfortunately uh, even though there's their it sector for example as i said in the mid cap it space is that is is very attractive uh, there is more interest in in being uh, safe with the money versus uh, picking risky bets let's uh, let's spend some more time discussing consumer names because that's the big uh, a uh, big topic of discussion so to speak within the consumer space what do you like where do you think there is a boom and there is a bust i don't think there's a boom or bust uh, uh, scenario at this point but i think the stocks that i do uh, think in particular uh, that stand out would be imami uh, the stock has underperformed uh, its peers uh, this year it has picked up in the past about 3 weeks or so uh after clarity on uh, the hospital event which took place earlier in the year where the promoters were in jail they're now out uh, of jail and i think uh, they're very smart about the fact that they are handing over the management of a plan to hand over the management of the hospital to professionals uh and dealing themselves from the day to day running of the hospital which will be i think a huge positive uh though the two were not related the stock in in, in particular had got punished uh, and i think uh, that's one stock that's playing catch up with uh, with its peers i would definitely put my money on imami Well, then it's quite interesting uh, to hear your views on Infosys at a time when the street is trying to divide their portfolios between a TCS, Wipro, or for that matter, a Hexaware or a Netseal Technologies. What makes you so bullish, besides, of course, the valuation parameter that you just talked about? Well, I think uh, you know it is an anomaly that you have Infosys trading at such a wide discount to the rest of uh, uh, well. more 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 so with the other uh, three players and more so i think uh, at a discount uh, a slight discount to hcl tech i think that is fundamentally the the, the reason why we think infosys will, uh, uh, will 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 see some degree of uh, buying coming in and that's the response we're getting from from the investors we've been speaking to so valuation is in, uh, in in i think the number one reason i would be putting my money on infosys katam if i look at the color of the management commentary from infosys the management is clearly or of the view that in the near term we will not compromise we are committed to protect our margins we are ready to lose revenue do you think this strategy which so far has worked like a charm for infosys could backfire because 1990s and early 2000 that was a different environment this is 2012 and the market conditions currently are are, are also different I agree but I think uh, if you look at historically the management speak at Infosys always has always been conservative you are looking at a uh, gradual rebound in the US economy and I think uh, that clearly puts the management uh, I think management in, I think in particular is 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 uh, undervaluing the stock and I think there's significantly more upside than what the management's uh, adding for mm. uh do you worry about auto sales numbers if i look at or if i map uh, what companies have reported for the month of april there seems to be a marked slow down beat two wheeler four wheeler for that matter cv sales yeah that's a fair question i think uh, we've done a series of road trips for investors in the past about 6 uh, months and in the passenger car segment uh, we were uh, quite surprised to find two particular myths which were busted the first myth being the fact that uh, interest rates have a huge impact on passenger sales uh, apparently they don't uh, that's the feedback we got from most of the dealers we met across the country in up bihar gujarat and the pradesh uh, what we also discovered is that the rise in uh, petroleum prices uh, petrol and diesel in particular do have an impact but not as big an impact as as the market actually uh, thinks so a lot of the demand for passenger cars in particular and also for that matter cvs is sentiment driven Unfortunately the sentiment at this point is not great in the country and obviously that's making a lot of people hold off or put off uh buying uh, either whether it be CVs or uh, uh passenger cars of course the two wheeler industry seems to be somewhat immune uh from from this i mean we're still uh, forecasting a 16% year on year growth for this particular year but more importantly i think getting back to CVs and passenger cars i think it's the sentiment in general that needs to improve in the country uh, and it's not just uh, about improving the fiscal i think it's the fact that the government needs to prove the upa government uh, for that matter needs to prove that a lot of the decisions the decisions and the announcement that's uh, announcements that they make are finally implemented versus being lost in political debate 
Gautam, is it a clear avoid uh, when it comes to the telecom space, considering the whole issue on uh, the spectrum is still pretty much playing out? I think it is. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, the fact is, we are at this point telling our investors to stay away from sectors that the government is going after. And if you look at the unfolding of events over the past three months, you've seen telecoms, you've seen tires, you've seen cement. Uh, today, this morning, headlines are screaming about Reliance being slapped with uh, uh, a uh, tax. So I think the government is going after sectors that have historically uh, been making a lot of money, throwing out a lot of money, and uh, finding may ways and means and how they can uh, basically increase revenue from these, these sectors. And I guess I forgot to mention uh, a couple other sectors uh, like uh, uh, merchant power, coal. So I think telecom will continue to be, I think, at the... Uh, uh, end of uh, one sector where effectively the government will go after to raise, to raise revenues given its massive fiscal deficit. Mm. So whether it's G2G or B2G, which is government to government or, uh, or business to government, uh, anywhere there, where there is a direct or indirect involvement of government, I guess those businesses are taking it easy. So Gautam, what is your assessment? Uh, is the India story over? Do you think uh, Indian equity markets, they've lost the charm? No, I don't think so. I think we are, we are reading way too much into this. I think this is going to be another tough year as far as the fiscal situation is concerned. And uh, I think no matter who you talk to or no matter how many times you go over the budget documents, it's hard to really come up with how the government can, can bridge the fiscal deficit or basically lower it. So I think that remains clearly a big concern. But I think the bigger concern uh, which we look at uh, to arrest the fall of Rupee is how does the government uh, go ahead and attract more FI and FDI investment. And I think hopefully uh, Monday's announcement on guard will put to rest a lot of the issues and we end up seeing more inflows coming in which will hopefully stabilize the rupee. Gautam, you know, last night I got a very interesting email from a viewer and I would uh, love to seek your opinion on this one. And the email was that in last four years, Indian equities have managed to underperform fixed deposits, they've managed to underperform FMPs and they've managed to underperform gold. Does it make sense for a retail investor to invest in equities at all? See, uh, that's a fair point, but that's the assessment of the last four years. I'm sure if you look at it over a longer time series, maybe over the last 10 to 15 years, the answer will be very different. I think the problem is uh, with interest rates as high as where they are right now, uh, banks offering anywhere from 10 to 11 percent uh, on fixed deposits, the average retail investor is just not interested in putting money to risk in the equity markets. I think that's really the fundamental problem. And until interest rates don't come down, you will not see the retail investor returning to the equity markets. We speak to our uh, retail team. Relica Retail uh, is now the largest uh, retail broker in the country. And uh, they, too, have seen uh, retail investors not being as active as they were even uh, as, as, as uh, early as uh, six months ago. So I think the overall participation by retail investors has definitely come down. Uh, mutual funds have been hit with redemptions. You've seen almost 20,000 crores of redemptions year to date, which obviously is, is, is a massive number. We've never seen a dichotomy where uh, retail investors have actually been sellers when foreign institution investors actually have been buyers. So typically the two have moved together, but this, this year around uh, that's not been the case. So I think retail investors will only come back as interest rates start to fall.